We're gonna box up a cobra today. We're gonna head over to Underground Reptiles to trade out this Egyptian cobra for a new snake, something that I've wanted for a very long time. Beautiful little Egyptian cobra, Naya Haja. Same species used to, for suicide by Cleopatra, no joke. And this snake is not reluctant to bite. The snake will land fangs in you and venom me. Beautiful species of Egyptian cobra. All right, we got a little hook ready. Oh, I already see it. It's hiding right here. What is going on, beautiful people? Wake up! Come on, good morning. How you guys doing? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm here in the snake house with my beautiful lace monitors. And today, we're just gonna start off with a little bit of feeding. Oop, I've been smacking my tongue so much. Let me fix it. I got a bunch of pinkies in this cup to frost it. Good little meal for my monitors. We're gonna see if the bell's face will come over. Jack, you want some food, Jack? You want some food, Jack? We took their water dish and their hideout a moment ago so we can get it cleaned out. So they're a little bit all over the place, but I'm sure he'll love some food. So eat some. There you go. Good boy. Let go of the tongs. Let go of the tongue. Let go of the tongue. Get the, get the, get the, no, get, thank you. They're very, very excited lizards when it comes to food. That's really good. They're growing like weeds. I love to see these guys eat. Let's see if Lacey, my normal, would like to get some food. You want some food? Huh? A little spooked because Jack's crazy? Come on. Don't be scared. There we go. Eat two at one time. No, 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 no. Stop it. Jack is a maniac. He'll come over and bite Lacey on the face and steal his food. Here, look. I got pinkies right here. I got pinkies right here, dude. Look. Come on, crazy. Come on. Don't be scared. Boom. Oh, look at that. No problem taking down food. He's just going to rip it in half. Are you good? Okay. All right. Guts everywhere. Very nice. I'm, I'm sure you're enjoying that. Beautiful lace monitors from Australia. Second largest lizard species in Australia. These guys can get six and a half feet long. Real long tails. Mostly arboreal, but they will end up on the ground hunting around, looking down game trails, and also they're great swimmers, so you guys can see these guys swimming in creeks and whatnot in Australia. And what's funny is these guys are basically like the raccoons of Australia. There's no raccoons native to Australia. These guys are the raccoons. You have a picnic outside, you have a, a bunch of meat, something smelly that they love, they will come over looking for scraps. And like here in America, some people feed the raccoons, some people feed the lace monitors in Australia, and they're kind of like a not a nuisance, but they definitely come and ruin a picnic and steal your food if you're not watching. So they're a pretty interesting lizard in the land of Australia, and they're a great pet here for me in Florida. Hey, you want some food? There you go. He's so gentle. That's Lacey up there. He's the normal lace monitor. And of course, this is Jack the Bell's face, a naturally occurring morph that happens out in the wild of Australia. Want some more food? You pig. You're such a pig, dude. We're gonna stuff these lizards. And then we have an Egyptian cobra to box up. We're gonna box up a cobra today. We're gonna to head over to Underground Reptiles to trade out this Egyptian cobra for a new snake. Something that I've wanted for a very long time. Want some more food? Want some more? Ah, oh, don't eat the tongs. Just be gentle. Be gentle, you crazy lizard. Look at you. He's like, I don't, I don't know. I, I try to just eat my food. I don't know why you judge me so much. Is that good? Uh oh. Don't, 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 no, oh, yeah, just, probably another camera person now. Get some more pinkies out, want some more? Oh, look at you. And they're all ripping that. You want some more, too? Come on. There you go. Crazy lizards. Give them a nice full belly so they're content for the rest of the day and they can enjoy the rest of the morning basking. Uh-uh. Let them eat it. I warn you, that did not feel good. Don't bite. The good thing is, even though you just bit me, they're so smart, they know immediately that I'm not food. They know the taste of my skin versus the taste of a mouse, and they'll let go immediately. But they need to learn as much as possible now before they get too big, because once this lizard hits around three, four feet long, if it bites me like that, it's going to slice my whole finger open to the point where I might need reconstructive surgery. So you don't want to muck around with these guys. They'll get you, and they'll put you in a bad situation. No one makes me bleed my blood, remember that. Did you see your sibling bit me? Such a I know. Hey, Jack. I'm changing your name to Jack okay? Come here. Good boy. Someone told me long ago There's a calm before the storm. I know! 
<laughs> so there's a sandwich. All right, we're gonna leave these guys be. We got some fresh water right here for the boys. So the kids can go swimming. A nice cork bark to hide in and sleep in. So they're gonna bask, enjoy themselves. We're gonna lock this up. I'm gonna throw a couple pinkies in for Gamora. We're gonna go box up that cobra. This is a solid wood snake box. It's actually the same size as Kevin's old pie box that we don't use anymore. So it's nice and spacey. I got two snake bags right here. So here in the state of Florida, when you transport venomous reptiles, you have to double bag them. They have to be sutured, secured, and then that has to be put into a wooden crate or a solid box that uh, simulates the same kind of security. And as you can see in this rack, we've only got two racks occupied, two of these tubs occupied. We have the Egyptian cobra right here, and then we have our little South American rattlesnakes. They need to get clean. There's a little bit of dookie here and there, but they're growing like crazy. We've got the other one back here. They're gonna be set up in a vision cage pretty soon. I got a good friend of mine coming down from Texas with, with a bunch of vision cages, so I'm gonna be getting those cages off of him. All the snakes are gonna get nice, spacey vision cages for display. And then here, oh, here we go, right here. We've got the lovely Egyptian cobra. It's been growing like crazy. We've got a nice full shed right there. Dirties up his enclosure like crazy. Look at that beautiful Egyptian cobra. Naya Haja, same species used for suicide by Cleopatra. The snake's no joke. If it bit you, they got neurotoxins, cardiotoxins, a whole lot of toxins. Nothing that you want to experience. Quit messing around. All right, so what we want to do is bag that snake, get him into this bag, then bag that bag, and then put those bags inside this lockbox. And then we're going to transport this snake all the way up to Parkland to underground reptiles so we can trade out my Egyptian cobra for a very uh, interesting species I've wanted to work with for a very long time. Now you guys are probably wondering, why are you getting rid of your Egyptian cobra? Well, the thing is, I have two. One right here, my, my lovely little guy, he's actually quite relaxed today, he's not freaking out too much. I've got this one, and then I've got the one in this rack. They both came from the same parents. They're a gift from a good friend of mine, Albert Killian. The thing is, since they're related, I have no intentions to breed them. I don't have any interest in inbreeding reptiles. It's not my thing at all. I like to do it. Pure bud lines keep it clean. Uh, so what we're going to do is just trade this one off and get a new species of snake we've never had in the collection before. I'm super pumped for it. Let me just get my snake hook ready and we'll get going. So i got a nice long bag. Super important when dealing with a lappet that's all over the place. Get this semi-opened. Get my hook out. You know what, I'm actually going to push the rack in more so I have more space to work with because I know how crazy this cover likes to act. Alright, so let's get Mr. Naya Haja up. Hello. How are you? I don't handle this guy too much only when it comes to maintenance. But you can see getting big. This is the smaller of the two and it has gotten huge. The parents of these snakes were literally 10 feet long and when Fish and Game came to do inspections, at Albert's house, he thought the parents, the fishing game officer thought the parents were actually king cobras, they were so big. So as you can see all over the place, what I'm going to do is just show the snake the nice dark hiding spot. Good. It's okay. Now usually I'm wearing my boots, but I just got back from the gym, so I'm wearing my running shoes. Not too good for handling venomous reptiles because obviously they can easily bite through it. So I use the snake hook to keep the bag flat to the ground, make it safe to tie up the bag. Keep the snake away from my hands. Because most of the times when keepers get bit, it's usually through a snake bag when they least expect it. So look, nice and secure, knot it up. I'm gonna put that bag in this bag. There we go. Very nice. Very nice. Super secured. No surprises when we open the box back up. There we go, perfect. And then I lock it up, easy for transport. Nice solid box. Now I don't have to worry about a uh, Naya Haja getting out in the car while I'm driving on the freeway. So that's always important. Now this rack will get clean. We'll use it for quarantine in the future. South Americans are going to get moved out to their own enclosures. And today we're going to go drop this cover off and go get something new. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, guys. I'll see you at the facility. Just need to start the ride. It's gonna take me probably about, I don't know, 45, an hour and a half. I'll see you guys at the facility. Let's go. I don't care, we're not stopping at McDonald's. What is 
going on, beautiful people? We made it to the underground facility. This is their farm, and this is actually their venomous room where they send out venomous to private keepers all around the country, whether they're licensed here in Florida or they're around the country in different parts keeping venomous. So this is obviously not the biggest part of the facility. This place is huge. It's a huge farm. We'll probably make a video another day. But since venomous are not a hot commodity for the public, it's not the biggest thing they have here. So there's a small collection of venomous, they bring them in, and they sell them to people like me and other facilities here in South Florida. So let's see, I've got my Egyptian Cobra set up, ready to go. This is where they're gonna put my Egyptian Cobra in this cage. We got a hole, we got substrate, we got a lock ready to go. First, I wanna take him out. And we're going to set them up in that cage and then we're going to check out this aquatic coral snake that I'm dying to see. I still haven't seen it in person. I've only seen photos. And this is actually the first time I'll ever see one in person. So this is going to be super exciting stuff. So remember, we double bagged this Egyptian cobra right in here. And I'm going to make sure I use my at most best handling skills to handle the snake because we're in such a small room and Walker's slowly grabbing tongs. <laughs> We're gonna handle the camera and a pair of tongs just in case. A walker, trust me. All right, cool. So I'm just gonna untie this bag. We're gonna get this girl into her new setup. There we go. Second bag. I love this snake a whole lot, but the reality of it is, I have so many animals. If I can't breed her to the other Egyptian cobra, I feel like there's no need to have her. And I have one of the two Egyptian cobras that my good friend Albert gave to me. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm pretty content with the one snake. Right, let's see. There we go. Beautiful little Egyptian cobra, Naya Haja. Same species used to, for suicide by Cleopatra. No joke. And this snake is not reluctant to bite. The snake will land fangs in you and venom me. Beautiful species of Egyptian cobra. And it's actually the second largest species. Whoo, second largest species of cobra in Africa. Whoo, really flighty too. All right, we're going to get right into this cage. Nice and easy. She's like, huff, 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 huff. New substrate in there. Nice new smells. And there you go. So let me get that block on there. Perfect. All right, this is the moment of the truth. I have not seen the aquatic pole snake in person. This is very exciting stuff. It's right in here. All right, moment of truth. And look at this. The owner of Underground Reptiles is right over here, Ryan Gitman. He's watching. He knows I haven't seen this snake yet. He's waiting for my reaction. All right, we got a little huff ready. Oh, I already see it. It's hiding right here. Oh my god, this is awesome, Ryan. That's just a milk snake. Yeah, it's just a milk snake. Holy smokes, look at its face. That's amazing. This thing's so beautiful. So guys, this is an aquatic coral snake. They come from South America. And just like the name aquatic coral snake, they're found in canals and rivers throughout South America, eating eels, knife fish. And they get around like four feet long, beautiful coral snake species. And you were telling me not too long ago, you're like, the survival rate is like little to nothing in captivity. That's why you don't Super see them, right? Toxicity. Super high toxicity, a lot of people don't keep them. So the thing is, we're gonna try our best to do a nice, beautiful bioactive setup with a, basically a paludarium. So it's gonna have water, and we're gonna offer knife fish, we're gonna offer axolotls, all kinds of small amphibians and sea bowl would work for food. So that's gonna be pretty interesting to see if this guy will do well in captivity. I'm super stoked to even be able to work with this species. And hopefully we can see these guys in the wild too. This is an awesome snake man, thank you. You're welcome. Look at this pattern though. This is just the most incredible animal. It's so beautiful. You look at it like this, what do you see? Beauty. No, I, I've never seen a coral snake with a red head like that. All it is. All it looks like from here is a, uh, uh, a milk snake, a Pueblo milk actually, because of the orange bands. So that's why when you get people who think, oh, I know the, the, um, the, the poem, red touch black, good for Jack, red touch yellow, kill a kill fellow. You try to explain to them, that don't work outside yeah, of Florida. It, it, it doesn't. <laughs> when I was in Thailand, there, I found a coral snake that was this big, brown with black spots. Right. Nothing resembling a North American coral snake. So the, the little saying, red touches black, all that, it never works for these snakes. They all come in different varieties. There are so many different species of coral snake, not just in North America and South America, but all over the planet, Southeast Asia. There are coral snakes all over this beautiful earth and they come in so many different colors. Look at that beautiful head. It's, it's almost has like a skeletal head. If you, if you, if you can up, get up close on that head, it almost looks like a skeletal uh, outline because of the like black bones. 
The black follows every plate of the head. I just stared at it for it's two hours. It's such yesterday. a beautiful looking snake. So I was gonna take some of this eco earth that you have that's nice and wet, and I was gonna put it at the bottom of this little container, shape sure, it up, sure, put it in my sure. snake box, and give them a go. Yeah, that's one of the, this one of the lessons. If, if you were gonna teach somebody a lesson, in my opinion, it would be to make sure that people understand that depending on where you're coming from, what state you're in, what country you're in, what town you're in, don't think that there's a, a rule that goes with every snake. Uh, you can't find yourself saying, oh, well, Chandler online said that I can do this. Yeah. And it's like, dude, where do you come from? Yeah. You don't, you don't take care of animals the same way in Las, Las, Las Vegas that you do in Los Angeles or New York as you do in Chicago. Yeah, it's all Every different. place has barometric pressure changes, uh, temperature changes, humidity differences, especially when it comes to hunting in the backyard. You go hunt in the backyard in, in in Florida and you think, well, I'll find a corn snake or I'll find a coral snake or I'll find a yellow resin. Yeah. And then you go do the same thing in upstate New York. It's like, you're going to get killed. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I always, I always try to make sure that just that snake has got to remind you that. I'm, I'm telling you, if you take just a picture of the back end of that snake and you show somebody and say, what is that? They're going to tell you. Milk snake. It's a milk snake. Yeah. That's all that is, is a milk snake. I realize it's one of the most venomous coral snakes on the planet. It's insane. There's and a I, zero, there's a 99.7% mortality rate by anybody that's been bitten by these things. Now, of course, a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's, it's South America and all, but nonetheless, it, it's a bad snake to get bit by. It's a deadly dangerous snake to get bit by. I'm not gonna be messing with him too much. I want him to get adjusted to his new environment, and I hope he'll make a badass display animal. I'm sure I appreciate will. the crap out you hit me up for this snake. I love yeah, this snake. You got it. I knew you'd appreciate that as much as anybody. Hey, and the, uh, I heard there's a rumor that you might be able to get red king cobras. Is that true? I heard. I, I, heard, I heard you heard. can get nine foot king cobras that have like red on them, like fiery red dragons. Uh, maybe so. Maybe that's a future video. I don't know. I don't know. But this is Ryan. Check out Underground Reptiles. Thank you, sir, so much. I appreciate you. Always let me come over and get a great deal on Anytime. some awesome snakes. Anytime. Proud of beautiful man. new coral Hey, guys. Snakes. If my endorsement means anything, watch the way Chandler holds and respects his animals, especially the cobras. Before I even met him, I watched his stuff and I said to myself, there's a young man who respects not just handles, not just likes, not just loves, but respects the animal he's handling. Full endorsement from Underground Reptiles. Oh, okay. All right, I'm going to give you a hug real quick. Oh. <laughs> I love this guy. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and stay gangster. Jack, I'm changing your name to Jack.